It's the 437th consecutive sellout at Rogers Arena tonight, dating back a decade to when the Canucks became an elite team. So it's always a hot ticket on the West Coast, but even hotter when the Canadians are in town. To Mark Lee and Kelly Rudy. And Scott, for the first time in more than a year after the lockout shortened season, the Canadians come west where they have that loyal fan base. Carey Price of Anaheim Lake, B.C. returns to his home province where he's posted consecutive wins. And he'll face one of his goaltending rivals for Canada's Olympic team, Roberto Luongo, who grew up in Montreal. Now playing the team he used to cheer for as a kid. The referees tonight are Tom Cowell and Steve Kazari on the lines, Thor Nelson and John Grant. And for the second game in a row, Mike Santarelli, the comeback player of the season so far, will start with the Sedins in the first line for Vancouver, facing Placanitz and the two red-hot NHL sophomores, Alex Galchenyuk and Brendan Gallagher, making his homecoming here tonight in the National Hockey League. Diaz on the blue line with Georges for Montreal. And it'll be Bieksa and Garrison on the blue line for Vancouver. Bieksa with the first outlet pass. Santarelli headmans as Garrison jumps the rush to Henrik Sedin. Back to Garrison who fires it into the corner for Daniel. Daniel for his brother Eric behind the net. Diaz battling him for the puck. Now Santarelli comes in to muck for it. Henrik tries to center. Goes off a skate. Santarelli, who's been so good along the boards, protecting the puck here for Vancouver. Henrik centering pass. Here comes Bieksa. A drag move. Can't get the shot through Galchenyuk, who gets it down the ice. Galchenyuk leading Montreal and scoring with seven points in four games. Henrik shot off a leg and glancing wide as Santarelli went hard to the net again. Behind the net, Daniel Sedin, pestered by Diaz. Gets it back to the point. Tanev, tipped in front, hits the top of the net. Whoa, that was close. Awfully difficult for Carey Price to keep his eyes on this shot here. Tanev steps into it. Vancouver's very aggressive in getting their defense involved in the attack, whether it's joining the rush or just pinching in from the point. Here's another example right here. Puck's going to go right to Tanev, and without hesitation, there's a shot deflection, which that is an awfully difficult play for a goaltender to follow. Lars Eller at center again tonight with Daniel Briere and Max Pacioretty trying to get those two veterans going. Briere has no shots on goal yet so far this season. No, well, Scott told us about uh, Zach Cassian being back in the lineup and with that great skating style and the big body, probably add to the forecheck. Here it is. That's an ugly incident with uh, Sam Gagne he missed eight games, including five regular season games, so I'm sure he's going to be full of energy tonight. So for the first time since opening night, the Canucks have 12 forwards in the lineup. It's hard to believe, isn't it? It, it is. So Weber can go back to being a defenseman. And Cassian will start on the third line this evening. Lars Eller. His pass is picked off by Yannick Hansen. Bouncing puck in front. Higgins fires his 19th shot on goal. Stopped by Price. Hansen in front. Higgins another chance. Oh, Chris Higgins has had so many scoring chances already this season, but can't buy one. P.K. Subban can't get it past the official along the boards. The Canadians are bottled up again. Subban fires it now to the open side. Markov is there. He'll flip it just out to Eller. Bouncing it back to Briere. Up the left wing for Pacioretty. He stopped by Tanev with a pass in front for Hamus. Dan Hamus dropping it back to his partner. Tanev now away from Rene Bork and a long pass to center. Streaking in is David Booth. Booth tries to split the defense and he's knocked off balance as Trust bounces it to center for Montreal. David Dearnay, who's lost his second line center job, down to the third line tonight. Dearnay dancing in deep, can't make a play. To Nordy, his shot whistles just wide as Bork was looking for the tip. Back to center, Brad Richardson caught in the long stick by Tenorti, and it's sent back in by Bouillon for Montreal. Excellent pace, Mark. Good pace back and forth. There's a turnover. Bork fires a backhand in front, and Luongo will hold on for a whistle. This morning I spoke to Ryan Kessler about the play of he and Higgins, and he just loves playing with Higgins because he's so good down low. Here's an example of his strength. Quick shot right here. Kessler is also saying that a little bit of bad luck involved, and here's a chance right here. Just goes wide by hair but they both feel that if they continue to play this hard and get the chances that it has to turn I agree with them with their talent. 
trying to get that second line on track. They've got Yannick Hansen on the right wing. Tonight, last Saturday night, it was David Booth. There's a shot off the side of the net. Ryan White gets it back to Josh Georges. Georges bouncing it in behind the Vancouver net to the near boards. And Garrison will flip it down the ice. This will be icing as Georges is back first for the Canadians. Just before the start of the game, I had a chance to talk to John Tortorella, and he was telling me he talks a lot about the teaching of the players, and you can see a bit of an example there. And I asked him specifically what he meant. He said, we need more bite, and that's below the hash marks in both zones, so look for that tonight. Canucks are really buying in to, to Tortorella, his motivation. Uh, one of the players was saying it's like being on an HBO. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, they bought in for this uh, high-risk, high pace. High attack game. The guys are telling me this morning that he is a great communicator. Dalpe tipping it behind Georges. Diaz is there to cover up. Galchenya to center ice. Brendan Gallagher, the Delta native, chipping it in deep for Placanis, the veteran center, banging along with Galchenya, and it's bounced back to center ice. Waiting for it is PK Subban. Three assists on Thursday night in that 4 1 win over Edmonton as the Canadians make their way through this Western road swing. Yeah, boy, does Subban ever create a lot of opportunities, Mark? And I talked to uh, Michelle Terrian this morning, and he was saying about Subban that it's all attitude. You know, he's always going to have that big personality, but he has to buy in to being prepared every night. Follow the leaders like uh, Sidney Crosby and Jonathan Taze and make sure that you're focused like those two stars. Yeah, I think the question was, what's been his biggest improvement? And yep. right away, he said attitude. He did not even hesitate. Warneval can't get it centered. Santarelli protecting the puck, leaves it for Yannick Weber, the former Montreal Canadian. The Habs gave up on him last year. And a hand pass call at center ice as we join Andy Petrello for an update. Incredible. Isn't it though? Seven goals. Everything you hear about him is just such a great personality too. Just loves absolutely coming to the ring. You gotta love his wide-eyed enthusiasm, <laughs> waving to his sister and his mother the other night. Now is that true? Is his mom wearing a Patrick Marlowe jersey? I know there's no, speculation is his draft, draft year, but year, I don't I know. Well, he couldn't be blamed for being a Marlowe fan. No. Pacioretty chipping it along the boards. He's caught in the pinch by Chris Tanev. Now it's flipped back down the ice. Hamuse back to steady it, throwing a long pass to the line. Higgins tips it back in the zone. P.K. Subban rimming it around the boards. Pacioretty chips it out for Briere. He's checked by Hamuse. Now the Canadians come back up ice. Pacioretty steaming into the zone. A nice move. Splits the defense. Gets the shot. Just misses the net, but draws a penalty here as Max Pacioretty using that power forward move. And a hooking call coming to the Canucks. Pacioretty showing why he's such a feared player in this league. High skill level right there, and Chris Tanev feels that at this point, Pacioretty has the inside step on him, and he's got to take him down. Pacioretty injured his left wrist in the season opener when he rumped into Colton Orr in the Toronto game. Awkward-looking injury, too. It was. So Tanev is off for hooking at 4.25. And the Canadians, ranked 10th on the power play so far this season, face an 18 for 18 Vancouver power play, or rather penalty kill, as Markov gets a shot right on Luongo, but the Canucks have been outstanding on the PK. If you don't land in a goal, I'd say that's outstanding. And this good chance by Montreal is created by a clear win by Pants right off the faceoff. And look where Gallagher goes. We saw this all last season in the shortened season, boy, I'll tell you. He knows what his job is, and that's to go to the front of the net. Lacanis gets the draw. Subban for Markov, who had eight power play goals last year to reinvigorate the man advantage for the Canadians. In the corner now, it's cleared by Garrison down the ice as it gets by Subban at the line. Price to Markov. Lacanis, a one-time pass to Gallagher up the middle. Here comes Galchenyuk, the rangy Russian. Firing it in deep. Vieksa around for Garrison, chasing it. Subban is there first. 
Pass comes to Gallagher. He whips it around the corner, and Pascal Chenyuk. Now Bieksa with a hard stick that knocks Gallagher down. On the near side, pinching is Subban as the Canadians are having difficulty getting this power play set up. Now Markov at the blue line. Fakes the shot, goes to Subban. He's got a wicked shot, fires a hard high one, and Luongo makes the stop, and Gallagher gets pushed around in front of the net. P.K. Subban gets a good chance right here. Known for a terrific shot. Check out the play before, though. Henrik Sedin on the penalty kill right in front of Markov on this. But Subban on his play trying to get the proper angle. Here's Kevin Bieksa protecting himself to a certain degree, knowing that in all likelihood Gallagher at that point is going to be the aggressor. Kessler and Higgins up front now for Vancouver. Bouillon across for Rafael Diaz. The Swiss defenseman drops it for Pacioretty. His shot is blocked by Ryan Stanton. Montreal maintains possession. Bouillon in front. One-timer. Scores! Pacioretty gets it underneath Luongo and in. And Luongo is vehement as he protests to the official. But it leaked underneath the netminder. Luongo feels as though the Montreal Canadiens poked at the puck underneath his pads. We're going to get a, another look at it here. There's a deflected shot, I believe, from the slot. Luongo's trying to find the puck through traffic. Goes right in the slot. It looks like it might have gone off Stanton's foot. I don't see any interference in here right here on Luongo. I guess he feels Rennie Bork right there. The view from the LASIK net cam, though, shows me anyways that the puck wasn't underneath Luongo that had slipped in behind him. So the Canadians are on the board first. As Pacioretty managed to get it underneath Luongo. One-timer White, a bouncing puck that goes to the near corner. Daniel Sedin pops it ahead to Henrik. He'll chip it in the zone for Santarelli. The power play marker at 5.43 for Montreal. Pacioretty from Bouillon and Eller. Long shot is tipped aside as Garrison's blast hits someone in front. He'll fire it towards the net again just wide and head for a change. Rather, that was Yannick Weber on the right side. Garrison has it go off his skate right to White. He headmans it to Travis Moan. Moan, a long shot off the blocker of Luongo. Kevin Bieksa. Ahead to Garrison. Five points. Makes him one of the top defensive scorers so far in this young season. Tenorti pressed by Higgins on the forecheck. Tenorti still trying to protect the puck. Kessler giving him trouble. They are there to help out. It squirts free to Hansen. Yannick Hansen firing it back around behind the net. Kessler cuts it off at the circle. Kessler back to the blue line. Garrison throws it back behind the net. A bouncing puck. Trust lining up. Hansen took his stick away on the check, and Bouillon now with some room. Off Vancouver, the board sorry, to Mark, center. Vancouver making it hard for Montreal coming out of the zone with that more bite that Tortorella talked about. The Canadians offside on the attack. They've got the lead. 1-0 as Pacioretty celebrates here in Vancouver. It's the Canadians' Brendan Gallagher in our Subway Restaurant's bio enjoying his second homecoming in as many games in this road trip. Born in Edmonton, had about 40 family and friends there on Thursday. Moved to Vancouver at age 12 when his father took the job as strength and conditioning coach for the Vancouver Giants. The two worked well together when Brandon starred for the Vancouver Giants. Former uh, teammates say there was never an ounce of favoritism shown that the smallest player on the team, Brendan, did everything the strength and conditioning coach asked him to do. As I said earlier, about 20 uh, in his family and friends contingent here tonight, led by his father, Ian, and uh, mother, Della, sisters, Brianna and Aaron, whom you just saw a moment ago. Mark? Scott, uh, we asked him this morning, uh, you know, what kind of advice he got from his father, Ian. He said, just be who you are. You know, it's the same thing he's always said, and it hasn't changed. Well, and that is a hard worker. I think that's what grabs everybody's attention right off the get-go. Ninth round pick into junior with the Giants, a fifth round pick into the National Hockey League, and he continues to defy the experts. Here's Lars Eller going to the net. Backhand blocker saved by Luongo. Now Markov can't get his shot through as Richardson got a broken stick on that. Tanev tries to make a play. In the corner now, they battle away. Eller, physical. That's been a new sign from him this year, a much more combative forward. Eller battling for the puck. It gets away from him, and 
David Booth comes up the left wing for Vancouver. Ahead to Cassian, and they can't finish the play. And a penalty coming here, and a holding call to the Canadians. And it looks like Lars Eller is headed to the box. Pretty aggressive shift by Eller. Lots of things happening. Some good, mostly good, and a bad right here. Montreal 81. It's a minor penalty for holding. Holding penalty. Take a look if it's right along the boards right here. And let's take a look at that 2 on 1 that Eller created. A terrific move around Hamus. What a great play by Tanev, though, to break that rush apart before the puck was able to get over to Pacioretty. To Eller in the box for holding. And Vancouver ranked 23rd on the power play. There's Garrison with a big blast. And the Canadians managed to turn it aside. Garrison has one of two Vancouver power play goals so far this season. He got that in a blast to open up the season against San Jose. Amuse drops it for Henrik Sedin at center. To his brother, Daniel. Flipping it ahead into the skates of Kessler down low for Henrik. Stopped by George as it goes up along the glass and bounces out of play. When you're playing with the Sedins, you have to really be able to support the puck. And here's a great example of it right here where Brian Kessler just comes in for a quick, short 10-foot pass. And that's why they're able to enter the zone before the puck was shot out of play. Kessler backing, backing way off to the right boards after the draw. And now he goes on the forecheck to Georges. Georges throws it around the boards from Prust. Diaz is in there. Daniel digging along with Henrik. And it comes free along the boards towards the back of the Montreal net. Kessler trying to find it. A real scrum for the puck. It comes free again. Diaz can't shovel it past the Canuck. Here's Henrik back to the point. Dan Hamus, no shot. Goes back to Henrik. He fires it towards the net. Pad save. Rebound to Garrison. And Carey Price makes a scintillating save. Carey Price with a couple of great saves, but Vancouver get the, gets these chances because, again, their defense are very, very active. Jason Garrison a couple times right here, but it's a shot right there. Price is able to come across. Stefan Waite, the goalie coach, wants him to be more compact, and there's a great example of it right there. Lacanitz beats Sandrelli in the circle. Along the board, Santorelli is mucking for it, gets it back to the line. Bieksa to Weber, no shot, he throws it into the corner. Santorelli is there first. It comes right back to Kevin Bieksa. Bieksa waits, leaves it now. Hansen looking for a tip, and it goes off Santorelli's stick and just wide. He scored a couple like that already this year. Hansen taken down by Placanitz along the boards. It's poked to the near point. Yannick Weber getting some power play time tonight for Vancouver. Holds it in at the line. Throws it towards the net. Chris Higgins camped in behind. Higgins tries to center. It goes off the skate of Markov and it's sent down the ice by Pacioretty. Ten seconds to go in the Vancouver power play. They have four shots already with the man advantage. It's tipped back in. Cassian chasing. Richardson there first for Vancouver. Pinching his BX but Travis Moe will get it past him and down the ice. The Canadians back to full strength. Surviving that Vancouver power play. Diaz across to Georges. Moan can't get it in deep. Bourneval now flips it. And Luongo will leave it. David Booth heads back up ice across center to the line. Leads it for Henrik Sedin. Chops it into the corner. P.K. Subban is there. He'll flip it to the far side. Placanitz trying to get his season going, playing with the youngsters again tonight in Gallagher and Galchenya. Here's Placanitz across the line. Snapshot pad saved by Luongo. Henrik Sedin throws it to the far corner. Gallagher gets it back to the line. Bouillon shot through traffic. It hits Galchenya, and the Canucks have possession as Santarelli comes across the line. Price to Subban. He's checked. Santarelli in, shoots, rebound, covered up. On a turnover, pounced on by the Canucks. Santorelli again, a threat tonight for Vancouver in a 1-0 Montreal lead.
Petrelli, signed as a death player, continues to make a huge impact for Vancouver. And comes from the corner to the high slot right here. Yannick Hansen spots him. The slap pass right onto the stick of Santorelli. They get a chance there. And then on the Subban turnover right here, Henrik forcing the turnover. Santorelli goes right to the front of the net. Gets a good scoring chance right there. Santorelli with two shots already tonight. Four goals in the first five games of the season, including back-to-back -back game winners in overtime. He's the first Canuck to ever do that. You the know, thing. right place at the right time. Go to the front of the net, and as we saw with his second overtime winner that just hit him on the way by. He's been the opportunist, has he not? Yep. Puck goes around. The glass stays in play. The Dayarnay in behind the Vancouver goal. Weber's got him all tied up. Former teammates grapple. Now Weber flips it along the boards to Daniel. Ahead to Henrik. He leaves it for Weber, who likes to jump the rush. Yannick Weber on a stick check by Georges, and Santarelli is offside at the Canadiens' blue line. Really impressed with the pace. I said that right at the beginning that I thought it was high pace, and it hasn't slowed down. If anything, I think it's picked up just a little bit. This is maybe the most free-flowing game that I've seen so far in this regular season with fewer turnovers than we normally see. Well, you know, the Canadians like to play that uh, fire wagon brand of hockey, and the Canucks embracing Tortorella's high pace game in this young season. Daniel Briere, 35-year-old veteran free agent signing from Philadelphia. Checked in the corner by Hamuth. Dito tied up. Pacioretty towards the net. It's blocked by Chris Tannen. He'll bring it back behind the net. Hamuth to the right wing. Weiss will leave it for Hamus. A long pass gets away from Zach Delphi. Tenorti loses the puck on a turnover right for Delphi on the pass from Weiss. It's still loose at the side of Carey Price. And he'll finally cover it for a whistle. But Tenorti caught in a miscue deep in his own end. Well, the Vancouver Canucks love what they're getting this year from Chris Tanov. And here's a, another example. Tortorella has brought up a number of times about how many times he's blocked shots already. This one doing it with his palm. Jared Tenorti with a turnover right here, trying to go back to his defense partner. And then there's a mad scramble after that. And Carey Price is able to end the madness by putting his glove on the puck. Kessler, Higgins, and Hansen on this second line. The, the Canucks are trying to get on track. Here's a weird bounce. It comes to Kessler. He bounces a back shot, backhand, and a pad save by Carey Price. Galchenyuk turns it over to Chris Higgins. Higgins, wrist shot, and he misses on the blocker side. The exit plays it towards the net. Markov is there to break it up. Gallagher. Long stretch pass. Lacanitz fires. Stopped by Luongo. Markov jumping into the rush in behind the Vancouver net. Lacanitz pokes it free to Galchenyuk. Galchenyuk in the side of the goal. It's chopped away from him. Hansen now battling with Lacanitz. He wins that battle. His pass goes off a stick right to Galchenyuk. Drops it from Lacanitz. Oh, and he misses on a sharp angle shot with Luongo down. Garrison battling along the boards with Gallagher. Now the exit, rimming it. And it'll get by Subban and back into the Montreal zone. Well, I just said that how this game has played pretty well with few turnover, turnovers and then that shift turn in, in each zone. Here's P.K. Subban going for a skate, but his pass goes right to David Booth. Booth turns it right back over to Prust. They are A to Georges, to Subban. He'll head for a change as he chips it into the Vancouver zone. Stands it around the board for David Booth. He's caught by Rene Bork. Cross pouncing on the puck. He can't make a pass with it. Stanton breaks it up. Yannick Weber. Broken up by Prust. Here come the fourth liners, or the third liners from Montreal now. Prust bouncing it behind the net. Dayarnay can't reach it. Rene Bork leaves it. Cut off by Richardson. Weber. His pass goes through the skates of Cassian and is flipped back in by the Canadians. Both teams changing on the fly. Tanev nearly caught on a check by Michael Bornaval. Stanton now to center. His pass goes off Bornaval's stick right to Subban. Rink wide for Travis Moan. Moan chipping it now. The Canadians chasing. Tanev 
being forechecked by Bourneval. White into support. Suvan all the way to the corner now. He comes free. Stanton will outlet to Weiss. He's got Hendrick Sedin going to the net. Drops it now. Wrist shot by Tanev. Rebound. Daniel Sedin is stopped by Gary Price. Oh, my goodness. Markov throws it back in. Both teams changing again. Five minutes to go here in a very fast-paced first period. Shots are 12-8 Vancouver. Puck gets away from Kessler. The fans here are chanting carry. There are a lot of Montreal Canadian fans out here in Vancouver dressed in the red, white, and blue of the Habs tonight. Hansen fires, misses the net. Garrison fires towards the net. It hits the stick of Higgins. And Pacioretty manages to get it down the ice. The exit back to center. Hansen, a one-time pass, broken up. And the Canucks regrouping again. Hansen back, takes a big hit from Pacioretty. The exit up the left wing for Booth. At center, he'll fire it right into the far corner. Tenorti with a shoulder check. He's in trouble as he goes down. Pacioretty there to help out and get it off the glass to center. Hamus to Booth. Chipping it, bouncing puck past Price to the corner. Tenorti pressured again. The Cannons, so defensive, helping out at center. It's kept in by Hamus. Off the boards into the corner. David Booth back to the blue line. Hamus across. Tanev's shot is blocked by Tenorti. The big defender gets it ahead to Gallagher. A three on two for Montreal. Placanitz across to Galchenyuk. The pass in the skates of Placanitz. His pass goes right through the goal mode. Gallagher rink wide. Pass off the stick and out of play. We'll catch our breath with three and a half to go here in the first. One nothing half. Sporting a bloody lip after taking a high stick following this great scramble in front of Carey Price. Excellent save by Tanev right here. You can see P.K. Subban right in front gets a stick up on Henrik right here and trying to clear him out of the front. Vancouver had two great chances on this. Tanev is so aggressive like his other defensemen this year under John Tortorella. And you could see that rush developing right from the Vancouver Canucks zone, Mark. They, whenever there's an opportunity, they join the rush. Off the draw, Rafael Diaz plays it along the boards. Prust is trapped, can't get away. Dayarnay knocked down, and Booth trying to find the puck in his skates. Brad Richardson gets it to center. Diaz across to Josh Georges, who came back to play in that Edmonton game after just one shift in the third period in Calgary. Take your game to the next level with Hockey Night Second Screen. Interact and compete for cash prizes. Be a part of our broadcast. Engage with us at cbcsports.ca slash second screen. 3.08 to go here in the first period. A highly entertaining first period of hockey. one nothing Canadians. Max Pacioretty scoring his second of the season on the power play for Montreal. Eller again physical, trying to find the puck. Kessler across to Bieksa. Bieksa to center, it's in behind Chris Higgins. And this will be icing against the Canucks. Brian Kessler telling me this morning that in the afternoon of the game, he likes to do all his thinking and just come to the rink and just react. And one of those things he thinks about are face-offs all the time, blocking shots, and visualizing scoring. So I asked him, is it a particular point on the ice you visualize or a particular shot? He said, no, because the opponent's always different and they play me differently. He feels his game is coming. He yeah. has one goal, but a minus four coming into this game tonight. In fairness, three of those minuses, though, have been when he's just stepped on the ice yeah. prior to the opposition scoring. And yeah, the stats don't tell the whole story. Yeah. Had a monster night against Edmonton, that 6-2 win with nine shots on goal, a goal yeah. and a fight. Back come the Habs. Placanid throws it on. Goal! Where is it? Luongo lost it, and it was cleared by Hansen. Subban across for Markov. Markov looking for a lane. His shot is blocked up high by Kessler, who's feeling some pain after that one. He'll head for a change. Subban to center. Lacanitz chips it into the zone. 
on the deflection. Garrison for Bieksa, back to Garrison. Up the left wing now, Daniel Sedin. To a streaking Santarelli, leaves it for Henrik. Henrik, pad save on a shot. In the corner, Georges is checked by Santarelli. He goes to the far side. Lars Eller, up the boards to center. Knocked down by Hamus. Daniel Briere to the circle, down low. Pacioretty's pass goes right through the goal mouth. Behind the net, Pacioretty's puck gets away from Briere. And a big hustle by Santarelli. Ahead to Daniel. Backhanding it to the corner for Henrik. Chopping it behind the net. It's gloved by Santarelli. He protects the puck away from Pacioretty. Santarelli now loses control of it. And Edler will get it to the line, but not out. It's gloved by Tanev and sent back in. Daniel circling. Backhand pass. Looking for Santarelli. Broken up. Hamuse now. Wanted to take the shot. Now he just loses his edge and gets it to the boards. Santarelli for Daniel. Daniel. Back for Henrik behind the net. To Santarelli. In the crease for Daniel. And stopped by Price. Daniel Sedin at the boards. Back to the blue line. Hamus fires through traffic. It's tip wide. Santarelli bouncing it to the backboards. To Henrik. Back to Daniel. Daniel to the circle. Back to Santarelli. His shot goes off a stick right through the slot. Canadians need a change, Mark. They are tired. Henrik Sedin camped in behind Carey Price. Trying to lift it off the back of the net. And it's finally cleared down the ice by Josh Georges. And the exhausted Habs head to the bench. Barely. <laughs> Hamus fighting the puck again. Manages to get it through the neutral zone. Montreal countering. Press now. Looking for Bork. Broken up by Cassian. It's chopped back to the line. A bouncing puck gathered up by BX as he joins the rush. And drifts it to the side of Terry Price. On the right wing, Rene Bourg charging with Prust. Back up ice. Dayarne joins the rush, tries to backhand it through the legs of BX, who makes a nice stop. And the horn sounds to end an exciting first period of hockey. Vancouver out shooting Montreal 14 to 9. But Placanitz here with a shot right on that Luongo had no idea where it was. Strange angle, and I talked about how Kessler thinks about blocking shots in the afternoon before the game. There's a good one off Markov, and then Carey Price, the busier of the two goalies, facing 14 shots. Made a good save right here. A little bit of traffic. Sedin's doing what they do so well. Short little passes. Santorelli fitting in really well on this line so far and again in the first period. So Henrik showing his bloody lip to the officials. Pacioretty of the power play. It's 1-0 Montreal after one. Stay with us. Ron and Don still to come in the first intermission. At Rogers Arena in Vancouver, the Montreal Canadiens with a one-goal lead heading for the second period. But assistant coach Gerard Gallant says his team certainly did not outplay the Canucks. In the first, Gallant says the Canadians would like Carey Price to have to make fewer big saves. And he says he counted about three or four Montreal turnovers at the blue line for the Canucks. If the first period is any indication, looks like their big challenge tonight would be to find a way to solve Carey Price, who's brought his best stuff, Mark. Well, John Tortorella is blending his lines again. He's got Yannick Hansen out with the Sedins to start this second period against the Flacanitz line with the two sophomores. Gallagher and Galchenyuk and Michelle Terrian was telling us Kelly he's not afraid to put the youngsters ahead out against the top line like the Sedins because he trusts Placanitz defensively. He also said that he wants to give them more responsibility in what better way than when you put them with a veteran like Placanitz. Henrik drops it to Daniel his rink wide pass to Pl to BX in behind the net. BX look how deep he is again showing how he likes to get involved offensively. Hansen covering at the point. Bieksa backs off. Daniel the side of the net. Paddle down save. Carey Price. Bieksa waits for the puck. Back to the point. Hansen a blast. And right into the midsection of Carey Price for the stop. Very impressed with Diaz. Standing to the right of his goaltender Carey Price here. Sedin's working their magic behind. And you know what? He doesn't fall for right here. The back pass right there. Diaz gets a stick on on Daniel to make sure he doesn't get that attempt. I mean, that is terrific hockey knowledge or IQ right there by Diaz to take away that scoring chance. Ryan Kessler facing Lars Eller in the circle. Kessler winning 71% of the draws against Eller in that first period. Patch ready ahead to Briere, broken up by Hamus. 
He scoops up the puck and bounces it to Higgins at center, chipping it right onto the stick of Markov. It's broken up by Pacioretty as Markov backs up in his own zone. P.K. Subban, a stretch pass to center. Eller to the right side. Briere on goal. And a blocker saved by Luongo. Hamus has a off his stick. Patch ready with a quick one-timer to the side of the net. Briere tied up in behind the goal by Sandarelli. Playing with Kessler and Higgins now on this second line. Tana to center. Flipping it into the Montreal end. Subban is there. Bouncing it off the boards for Eller. Lars Eller wants to go back to Markov, and he does. On to Subban, bouncing it up the left wing, and Pacioretty will get it out from that furious Canucks forecheck. At center, Pacioretty sends it in, and the Canadians have to clear the zone. Ryan Stanton, his pass is too far for Richardson, and this will be icing against the C Canadians. Very impressive. Canucks. Very impressive how relaxed Roberto Luongo is before games. Here in warm-up, he goes to say hello to Perry Price. He actually told me in the corridor how sharp my suit looks tonight, in which you'll see that in after hours. But then once the game starts, here's that fiery competitor that has done so well for the Vancouver Canucks. Nothing short of a winning machine, thinking that Rennie Bork got a stick into the pads, which he didn't. Fashion Week doesn't start for another two weeks, Kelly. <laughs> Just thought I'd throw in this, that in there, Mark. I don't wear this suit often. A hand pass from Bork to Prest and a whistle inside the Canuck zone. All right, Roberto Luongo. Just such a good focus athlete. In fact, I talked to Eddie Lack this morning about... Uh, how he's learning from Roberto and his preparation. So he's just drinking it all in and acting like a sponge and trying to learn everything he can in a short amount of time. Dayarnay gets the puck to the boards. Bork can't make a play with it. It's chopped back out into the neutral zone. Dayarnay again to Prust. Brandon Prust to Bork who whiffs on the one-timer. And Booth ahead to Cassian with Richardson as they charge up the ice. Down goes the official, the puck goes right to Booth. His pass is behind Richardson, and it goes off the boards to Dayarnay. The other way with Rene Bork. Here comes Preston on a three on two, and no rebound from Luongo as he makes the stop on Bork's wrist shot. Tom Cowell, the official, went down in the Montreal zone. I'm not sure what happened. See it in the far corner. Oh, he just loses an edge and falls. All right, well, the good news is I think he's okay, so. That crossed up Georges, who was going yeah. to the boards for the puck. Yeah, good. Everybody's happy. We're set to go. Off the draw, Subban, no shot. Across to Markov. His shot is tipped high into the glass above the net. A high stick called on the play, and the faceoff coming outside the Canucks blue line. Well, this is a little slower start than we had in the first period, Mark. It was uh, high tempo, high energy, great passing. So far for the almost three minutes we played here in the second, the pace has slowed down just a little bit. A little bit more of a tentative game right now. I expect the Vancouver Canucks are going to start to activate their defense again like they were in the first. The Canucks, at least they have four lines to uh, use tonight. And the fourth line out there against the Montreal counterparts. Here's Markov, winds, fires right through on goal on traffic and a nice save by Luongo. Up the boards, Dale Weiss can't get it by. Yes, he does. Markov thought he trapped it inside the line and this will be offside. Here's one of the problems when you ask all the players to block shots. Markov gets a shot through from the point. It's going to hit Tanev in front and then it gives Roberto Luongo all sorts of problems right there. He's unsure where that puck goes after the, the, the deflection in front. But lucky for the Canucks, he keeps it out. Luongo started the night with a 274 goals against average and an 899 save percentage. Not gaudy numbers. His best games have almost been the games they've lost against San Jose. San Jose yeah, it's been uh, unfair to a certain degree. Galchenyuk's pass goes right through the crease. Georges ahead to Gallagher. He's pushed off the puck by Daniel Sedin. Hansen bounces it behind the net. Garrison puts it up the left wing to Daniel. He has it knocked down. He's pinned along the boards. Canucks get it to center. Waiting for it is Henrik on to Bieksa. 
Out to play it is Carey Price off the boards. Right to Hendrick. Daniel tried to return pass. He's battling for it. Now behind the net with it. To the corner in front of Georges. To the point. The X off the stick of Gallagher. To Hendrick waiting along the boards in deep. Hendrick Sedin checked by Gallagher. It's kicked ahead by Hansen. Daniel gets it off the glass in behind Price. The exit activating in deep again for the Canucks. Hansen checked by Galchenyuk. Now he recovers. Leaves the puck for Henrik on to Daniel as the Canucks keep the Canadians at bay. Henrik Sedin, long pass stick in the lane by Gallagher. He can't reach it. Garrison towards the net. Oh, and it just bobbles by Carey Price to the corner. The X again, can't get the shot through. Checked by Galchenyuk, a three on two for the Canadians. McCann is to Galchenyuk, he's got Gallagher in front. Oh, a great recovery by Bieksa to get a stick in the way to break it up. Garrison to Bieksa. The Canadians were exhausted on the forward line on that attack as Gallagher could barely get back up there on the three on two. Well, that's one of the dangers when you have a rush like that. And you, you feel that you have to go for it and yet at the end of the rush, you have nothing left. They were pinned in their end so long, they yeah. had nothing left. Pass goes off the skates of Daniel Breyer. Right to Chris Higgins, he sends it back in the zone, chasing down Lars Eller. Eller gets it past Santarelli, but it's kept in by Dan Hamuse. Denorti, away from the check of Higgins. The pass gets away from Bouillon, Kessler is there first. He takes a shot from Bouillon, goes down on his knees. A chase for it, Santarelli. Can't get there to Nordy first. Puck comes behind the net to Higgins. In front for Santarelli off his skate. And he couldn't get it to his stick. Another three on two for the Canadians. Pacioretty is checked by Tanev. And it's chipped the other way. Kessler to Santarelli. And it's broken up and sent back down the ice by Markov. A race for Briere is there. Pacioretty in front. And he can't get the deflection past Luongo. Markov down deep again. Pacioretty. Bumping with Briere as they got confused behind the net. And Tanev will flip it to center ice. Andre Marco back the other way. Pressed fresh legs off the bench. Dropping it back. Dearnay shoots. It's blocked by Ryan Stan. Another chance. Two more whacks headed by Dearnay. And Luongo stands tall in the Vancouver goal. Booth dumping and chasing. He stood up by Subban. And we've got a penalty coming here, an interference call. P.K. Subban headed to the penalty box for interference. Right here as he impeded the progress of David Booth. The Canucks on the power play when we come back. P.K. Subban grousing with Tom Cowell after taking the interference penalty at 622. Well, I'm not sure why he's upset. That is just clearly an interference penalty right here. Lots of action, though, starting with this Jason Garrison long shot that Carey Price didn't see until the very end. And Galchenyuk and Gallagher at the two-on-one. What a back check by Kevin Bieksa. Then Montreal's not done right here. DeHarnay with three chances right here. And Roberto Luongo with his best saves of the game. So Vancouver on the power play, 0 for 1 tonight with four shots on their first power play. Mechanics facing Henrik Sedin in the circle. Sedin wins the draw cleanly. Hamus drops it for Daniel. His shot is blocked by Georgia, scooped up by Henrik. Daniel away from Placanitz along the boards. Bouncing it back into the official skates against the Hamus. Garrison a blast. And it's cleared to the boards by Georgians. Placanitz. Can't get it out. Kept in by Garrison. Daniel Sedin now. Drops it back to the blue line. Hamuse to Garrison. Across to Daniel to the circle. Fires. Price the save. Cuts to the rebound. And Price goes down to hold them off. Jason Garrison, everybody knows about his unbelievably hard shot. Here it is on a one tire now. Hits a handle of Carey Price's stick. Knocks it out of his hand, so you can see Ryan Kessler going to create all sorts of havoc for Price on this one. Here comes a shot. Knocks a stick out of his hand, and then the Sedins again down low. Gary Price thinks he has that one, but he doesn't. Kessler goes after the rebound. Henrik Sedin facing Ryan White this time. A scrum draw that 
Kessler gets to first. Garrison a shot. Pad save. It goes through the skates of Hendrick Sedin at the side of the goal. Daniel back to the point with it. Hamus walking the line. Goes back to Daniel. To Hamus. He fires. Pad save. Kessler can't get the rebound away again. Hendrick Sedin along the boards. Down low. Daniel back to the point. Garrison again. His shot is blocked. It trickles towards the front of the net. It's in skates. Here's a chance for Daniel Sedin. And it's whistled down as Carey Price's face mask has come off and is lying on the ice. You get that knocked off, right? How does that come off? Looks like Carey is saying a stick got wrapped around his head. That's mm -hmm. how it came off. Well, the Canucks again love that one-timer. They get a couple chances right here. There's Garrison once again. Henrik can't handle the rebound. Then Hamus gets a second opportunity right here. Another similar looking save Kessler is all over him in front right here let's take a look what happens that's I think that's as much as Markov pushing Kessler into price Canucks with five shots on this power play they're only halfway through it Higgins now on the drop one by Eller Diaz gets it to the board crossed his bump by Weber it comes free to Higgins back to the blue line BXF fires looking for a tip and it goes wide Prest will get it along the boards and down the ice. There's no question, Mark. He was looking for a tip. He hesitated, waiting for traffic in front. Nothing happened on it, though. Yannick Hansen to center. Across to Santarelli, into his skates, onto his stick. Plays it right along the boards to Eller, and he'll get it off the boards and back down into the Vancouver zone. 20 seconds left in the Canuck power play as Yannick Weber storms to center. The former Canadian to the boards with it. Higgins back to Weber, right through the goal mouth, missing Santarelli. And Placanitz will send it down the length of the ice. And that will do it. Five shots for the Canucks on this power play. And P.K. Subban is back on the ice, the Canadians to full strength. Booth is stopped by Markov, and he's checked by Hansen. The puck goes high along the boards. Crust has to wait. And we'll take a break and a chance to remind you the seven remaining pairs are thankful to be here. Watch them try to stay on their feet on an all-new Battle of the Blades tomorrow night at 8 on CBC Television. My good friend and former teammate Mike Krushelniski, the first to be voted off Battle of the Blades, which disappointed me and one judge in particular I was kind of angry at. Who would that be? <laughs> would his initials be PJ? <laughs> Might be. <laughs> Chris Tanev gets it deep. Subban bouncing it for Dearnay around the boards. Bork will get it ahead to Presti's by himself and cut off by Tanev. Chris Tanev will leave it for Cassian. He'll drop it right to Rene Bork. Tanev goes down in a heap behind the net as his partner Ryan Stanton picks it up and sends it up the right wing. Too far for Booth. He can't catch his Bouillon gets it back to center. And Richardson brings it in on the offside. Everybody talks about Chris Tanev and how well he's been playing and his offensive upside and blocking shots this year. How about this angling right here? Brandon Press was unaware that Tanev was going to be aggressive in that situation. Easily goes back, retrieves the puck, and gives it to Cassian, and away they go again. That's just some real terrific play by uh, Chris Tanev. He was actually unaware, Mark, when I was talking to him this morning, that John Tortorella has been really uh, praising the young defenseman. So little smile came across his face when I told him that. It's an amazing story. A young man who was cut several times in midget, played yeah. high school hockey and roller hockey, and then one year at RIT in Rochester before he got a free agent contract. Yeah. Puck behind the net comes free to Gallagher, and he's stopped by Luongo. A mix up there in the Canuck zone. Garrison pressed by Gallagher, turns it over to Placanitz. He'll throw it to the near corner. Brendan Gallagher is there first, back to Galchenyuk. They keep the cycle going to Placanitz. It's broken up by Henrik Sedin. He'll find a wide open Bieksa, and Bieksa will drift it to center. Cut off by Hansen. Yannick Hansen now. His shot is blocked by Josh Georges. Hansen picks up the loose puck along the boards. It comes free to Gallagher. Ahead to Eller. Eller now reunited with the youngsters, but they're heading off at the end of a shift. Eller. Physical along the boards with Tanev. Loses the puck and his glove. Markov pinching, can't keep the puck 
Now he's got it in his grasp and sends it deep. Eller knocked off the puck by Hamuse. Hansen outlets to Henrik Sedin. Caught in the back check by Pacioretty. Markov back to Pacioretty. He can't receive the pass. Chasing it down low. Takes the hit from Dan Hamuse. And the Canucks in transition now. Kessler angled off by Bordeval. Briere turning it center ice for Montreal. Across the Vancouver line, flipping it on goal, and it's scooped up by Roberto Luongo. We'll take a break. We've reached the midway mark of this hockey game in a 1-0 Canadiens lead. Last June, Canucks goaltending coach Jolie Melanson, who once had the same job with Montreal, was quoted as saying Carey Price had become worse over the last few seasons. The Canadians, after Price struggled in the first round of the playoffs, had already fired Pierre Gruel. And when the playoffs were over, they snapped up Stefan Waite and centered your screen there. He had a hand in two Stanley Cups with Chicago. There is a consensus that Price is displaying more economy of movement under Waite's tutelage. And he has certainly had all the answers tonight, Mark. Yes, uh, Stefan Wake grooming both Antti Niemi and Corey Crawford for Stanley Cup victories. Bourneval turning in the corner away from pressure. Bouncing it back to P.K. Subban. He throws it on goal. Pad saved by Luongo. Travis Moan tying up Stanton. Now Ryan White mucking for it. Yannick Weber gets there ahead of Moan. It's kept in by Markov, and he sends it right back in. Luongo waiting. Stanton ahead to Dolphy. Bouncing puck in the high slot. As they fence for it, it comes free to Dolphy. Back to Tanev. Tanev moving to the middle of the ice and fires it off a body. Bouncing behind Carey Price. Markov shovels it to Prust. Cross turns it over to Dale Weiss, but he can't make a play with it as Subban is there to pick it up. P.K. Subban will flip a long one. It's intercepted by Tanev. Weiss checked by D'Arnais. Kessler can't reach it. Back to center it comes. Bork has to go right to Kessler. He hits the linesman. It bounces back in offside. The Canadians have to tag up. Rather, the Canucks have to come outside the Canadian zone. As Markov heads to center. Long pass in behind Prust. Icing waved off. Brandon Prust along the boards for Rene Bork. Bork back to Dayarnay. The small centerman checked by Higgins but manages to find Tenorti. He'll get it deep again. Prust holding off Hamuse. Prust and Hamuse battle for the puck. Bouillon goes down on the pinch. Prust has the puck come right to him behind the Vancouver net. Rene Bork in the corner. Down low for Prust. Prust in front. It comes all the way back to Francis Bouillon. Bouillon to the slot. Bork is checked. It's kept in by Bouillon. It comes to Dayarnay. He battles now with Hamuse. It's poked away by Kessler. And the Canucks will finally get out of their own zone. A long stretch pass. Higgins onside. In. Stopped by Carey Price. Back the other way. Gallagher gets it to center. Checked by Bieksa. Garrison fires it along the boards and it pops over the boards and out of play at the Canucks bench. What a clever play by Santorelli right here. The Canucks are leaving their zone. Just a little flip pass over here over the tall Jared Tenorti too, right onto the stick of Higgins. That's a good play right there. Tenorti 6-6. Wow. Chris Higgins came into the game with 18 shots. He's got uh, two more tonight at least. Still looking for that first goal of the season. So 20 shots so far for Higgins. There's a shot right on the rebound to Daniel. Back in front. They score. Henrik Sedin ties it for Vancouver. All the Montreal Canadiens converging to the front of the net after the first shot. And why wouldn't you? That's a natural play to try and lift that rebound up and over the goaltender. But no, that's not how the Sedins work. They just think differently than everybody else. And they know, let's go to the front of the net. And so there it is. Daniel doesn't go 
try and flip it over Price. He throws it right to the middle of the ice, and of course he knows his brother Henrik's going to be there, and it's 1-1. Henrik has his first goal of the season, and his team leading seventh point after the Sedins were held off the score sheet for the first time this season in their last game, a 4-1 loss to San Jose. That was a similar goal tonight that we saw last week against Edmonton. Just the other brother scoring. It just, boy, it never ceases to amaze me how under that sort of situation, and of course, if you're the opposition, you are going to think that they're going to go to the net. And no, they throw it back out in the slot. Inevitably, their brother's open or their line mate. I think it was Ryan Kessler who told Scott last week he knew what was coming and even he was dizzy <laughs> when the Sadiqs pulled that. So you imagine opponents. At center, Subban with a train wreck on Brad Richardson. He doesn't like it as they scrum behind the play. P.K. Subban with a tail first hit. A big butt check at center ice on Richardson. As David Booth. Gets it in deep. Price leaves it for Subban. He's lined up by Cassian. Lacan, it's ahead. Four Canadians in the rush. Galchenyuk fires it short side. And an arm save by Luongo deflects the puck out of play. The physicality beginning to heat up. And now Subban having words with the Canucks bench. Well, this is what we come to expect from P.K. Subban. A real active game. Richardson right here. Subban steps into him. Zach Cassian is going to go now and try and protect his teammates. Send a message right here to Subban. Subban getting into it with the Vancouver Canucks on the bench, but that's his style, you know. PK's always been that, very verbal. It's a pretty talented check to come in that fast backwards, sure have is. it all lined up, and he exploded Richardson along the board. A little bit like Rob Blake. Yeah. Penardi shot, bouncing just wide of Luongo. White is there first on the forward check to Moan. Weber punches it back along the boards. Higgins can't control it. Warnavel around boards into the near corner for Ryan White. White scrapping with it, and it's flipped out by Kessler. He takes a hit from Moan after flipping it out to center. Penardi tangling with Santarelli. Punching it back towards the Vancouver line. Santarelli wide open on the right wing. Fires it past the big defenseman to Nordic. Julio lined up by Kessler and he takes him down hard behind the Montreal net. Game beginning to get more physical here. Julio pushing with Santarelli. Trying to protect the puck. Getting some help from Higgins to Nordi. Pressing him. Santarelli still on the puck. Now he's knocked down. It's free behind the net. Santarelli scoops it up. Back to the blue line. Bieksa waiting across for Garrison. His shot and a blocker saved by Price. You saw that in the last minute. Garrison again. It's blocked in front by Tenorti. And Ryan White will get it down the ice. Great pressure by the Canucks. Tenorti needs a change. He's tired, but that has maybe been his best shift of the game. And there follows it up with a big hit. And he's going to get a penalty. Tenorti is going to the box for interference. You mentioned Kelly, he was exhausted. Yeah. He was beaten along the boards, and that's all he could do. So the Canucks going on the power play. Kessler throwing his weight around in a 1-1 hockey game here in Vancouver. Jared Tenorti, the Canadians' first round pick in 2010, is in the box for interference. And Hansen does chip the puck by him right there, and there's no question at that point. That's interference. Ryan Kessler again with that big hit on Bouillon. Boy, Kessler's been active this game, especially in the second period. A rougher second period, no question yep. after that fast first period. And Vancouver on the power play. They're 0 for 2 with the man advantage tonight with a total of nine shots on the power play. Kessler wins the draw. Garrison with the puck to Henrik. Henrik Sedin can't get it. It's sent down the ice. Luongo out to play it in front of the goal line. Plays it behind the net to Hamus. Away from the forecheck pressure of Brandon Prust. And on to Henrik Sedin. To Daniel. Back to Henrik to Daniel. Rink wide. Garrison a blast and a glove save by Gary Price with Kessler camped right there on the doorstep. So difficult to cover the Sedins. 
two on one right here and they just go back and forth between each other and set up Garrison that's his third unbelievable one timer today already you just know that that's going to be set up but you have to expect your goaltender if he's world class like Kerry Price and he's going to make that save from that far out he trapped that in the crook of his elbow yep. Eller who struggled in the first period in the circle against Kessler it was two to one in favor of Kessler and he wins another draw cleanly back to Garrison Jason Garrison with that big bomb of a shot throws it on net it's blocked up high comes back to Hendrick looking back door to Hamuse behind him and Eller will shovel it back down the ice that's an example of where Hendrick has to be more selfish and shoot that puck at the net The strangest goals you'll ever see in hockey. All the Canadians were at their bench making a change. I don't think there was any Montreal player in the end. And it ricocheted. Now, this is just bad luck. This is not Roberto Luongo's fault. It's nobody's fault. Just some bad luck right there where Hamus thought he had it from Garrison. Gets it caught in the skates of Garrison. Roberto, of course. Not following the puck, and wow, I just, I don't know if I've ever seen one quite that odd, and I've seen a lot of strange goals go in. Off both of Luongo's skates and into the net. An own goal, which will go down as a shorthanded marker. You can see Travis Moen was the last Canadian in deep. He was headed to the blue line when it went in the net. All the other Habs were back at their own bench. It's kind of how P.J. Stock scored his first goal in the <laughs> National Hockey League on me. He was sitting on the bench when it went in. No kidding. <laughs> Lars Eller was the last Canadian to talk, touch the puck, Ooh. so he's being credited with the goal, his fifth of the season in five games. How easy is that? Here's Kessler shooting. It's blocked up high by Markov, who goes down. Garrison along the boards to Hendrick, on to his brother, too far. Kessler tracks it down. Bornaval lost his stick. Here's Henrik in front looking for Kessler. Bornaval still without his stick. Hamus down low. Daniel in front. Garrison a shot. Pad save. Kessler looking for it. Loose puck comes back to the line. Hamus, no shot. Goes to Daniel in the circle. Daniel Sedin down low. Kessler in front. Paddle down save by Kerry Price. Kessler is tripped on the play. Tenorti back on the ice. Two shots on the Vancouver power play, but a shorthanded marker goes in on that mess up in the Canuck zone. And the Habs have a 2 1 lead. Garrison again with another chance, this time leaving his point position. Let's, Let's take a look at. Let's go! Eller gets credit for the goal. He just fires it down on the penalty kill. The length of the ice. Moen, of course, doesn't touch it. And here's where the confusion starts. Oh my goodness. I would be almost certain that Eller was sitting on the bench again. That's from where he shot the puck and by the time he probably got off the ice. Well, he was about 180 feet yep. from the net when he sent it up the ice in a Keystone Cops goal that has John Torella smoldering and the Canadians have called a timeout. Good usage of the timeout here. Vancouver with 29 shots on goal. We'll use this timeout to remind you. A six-figure ask leaves the Dragons feeling flushed, and a demonstration comes to a smashing halt on an all-new Dragons Den, Wednesday at 8 on CBC Television. Wow, this game has been played so well. Great physicality here in the second period. Incredible attacks, odd yep. man rushes, and then that. Great goaltending other than the weirdest goal we've seen so far this season. Terry Price has been brilliant. Somebody asked uh, Michelle Terrian this morning if there's any thought given to starting Peter Budai. And of course he said no, that Terry Price has played really well this year so far. And he's certainly having his best game of the season. And of course the homecoming for Price as well, the yeah. Anaheim Lake native here in BC. Playing on Vancouver Ice. He's won his last two games here. Last loss back in 2009. The exit towards the net. It comes right in front and is cleared away by Subban. Bordeval manages to chip it back to center. 
At center ice, Canadians take possession. Bohm gets it in the zone. Daniel Briere chasing. Bieksa rims it all the way around. It's cut off by Pacioretty. Pacioretty in front for Eller. It ricochets off his stick to the corner. Lars Eller bouncing it behind the net to Briere. Briere's pass is intercepted by Santarelli. Ahead to Chris Higgins. Back to Bieksa jumping into the rush. Kevin Bieksa, a long shot and gloved by Carey Price for a whistle. Log on to cbcsports.ca slash power picks and choose your Silverado power picks for this week. Each vote counts as a chance to win a 2014 Chevy Silverado. One forty-seven to go in the second period. Richardson beats Placanitz in the circle. Tanev shot goes off a shin pad to the corner. Diaz drops his stick, gets checked in the process. George is the other way for Gallagher. He manages to chip it outside the line. Booth plays it back to Jason Garrison, across to Chris Tanev. Back to Garrison. They'll come up the left side. It's tipped in the zone by David Booth. Georges and Richardson rushing for it. The Canadians will get it back to center. Galchenya weaving at the line, away from Booth. Inside the zone, the Placanitz, back to Gallagher. His shot is blocked by Chris Tanev. Gallagher again, blocked by Tanev a second time. Subban flipping it towards the net. It's knocked to the corner by Garrison, and it flips high and into the protective mesh out of play. And this face-off will come outside as it went off a of Montreal stick. Montreal gets a great scoring chance, but only because Brendan Gallagher stays on side. He works his tail off at making sure that it's not an offside created by him right here. So he hustles back. There it is. Galchenyuk now crosses the blue line. Good hockey awareness there by Gallagher, and then he's the one that ultimately gets a scoring chance. And a great shot block there. Of course, by Chris Tanev. Take a look at the two second-year players. Had great seasons last year, and Cheryl Terrian was uh, saying that the reason they're not off to a slow start in their second year when some players can is that they just really, really want to get better every game. Yannick Hansen drifting it ahead for Daniel Shadeen inside the line. Leaving it for Henrik. Henrik back to Daniel. His shot is blocked. Rebound right on. Price looking behind him. He's down on the puck and they push and shove. After the whistle, Subban in the mix there with Hansen and the Sedins. But Carey Price was not sure where that puck was for a moment. Price just played the odds in this situation right here. He can't see it, loses sight of the puck, so just has to assume in this situation with all the traffic that it's going to be a low shot so he just covers as much of the bottom part of the net as he can. It's a little bit lucky like the puck does come and hit, hit him right in the uh, stomach right here but there's no question to me the last half of the second period the Vancouver Canucks part of their strategy is to get more traffic in front of Carey Price. Not nearly as much traffic in the first period and it's, it's having a lot to contend with in the second. Vancouver out shooting Montreal 17 11 here in the second period. As Hansen drifts that one right on, it's gloved on the bounce by Carey Price. Also, Terrian was saying that uh, somebody asked about the battle between Price and Luongo. Is that one of the reasons why Price <laughs> is starting? And he had a nice little laugh, just like you did, Mark, that he hadn't even considered it. It's still too early in the season. He's more concerned, of course, about the Montreal Canadiens. Yeah, I'm not worried about the Olympics. No. I'm just worried about winning tonight's game. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. The Placanitz facing Henrik Sedin in the circle. Sedin gets the draw, but it's pounced on by Pacioretty. He manages to get it out. Stands it under pressure. Chops it away. It's gloved and brought in offside by Thomas Placanitz. Kevin Bieksa is very aggressive in early parts of the season. Not sure if we're going to have it, but uh, yeah, maybe a little bit of a slash on the hands of Wakanitz after that offside. So Kevin does it all. Boy, he'll play in your face. He can 
lead the charge. You can even score some goals. Final 20 seconds of this second period. The Canucks get it in the zone. George is off the glass and back out. Kessler right back into Higgins. Charging it down in the final 10 seconds. George is along the boards. Gallagher outlets to Eller. He can't get it past Garrison. Now Georges will try it again. Takes a hit from Kessler but gets it to center as the horn sounds to end this second period. Shots 31-20. Vancouver through 40 minutes. What a weird own goal for Montreal and they lead 2-1. Vancouver Canucks have to play from behind in the third period, the result of an unfortunate mix-up with uh, just under four minutes to go in the second period. Assistant coach Glenn Gullickson says the message to the Canuck players between periods was to shelve this mix-up. He feels that overall Vancouver outplayed Montreal in the second, created chances, drew penalties, and need more of that in the third period if they're to come from behind. P.K. Subban, as he usually is, was in the middle of the action for the Montreal Canadiens in the second period. He is one of three Subban brothers. Of course, he stars as the swashbuckling defenseman for the Canadiens. And then there's his brother, Malcolm. It's a goaltender, first round pick by Boston. He's in Providence right now. And there may soon be a Subban playing for the Canucks. The youngest of the three brothers, Jordan, like P.K., a defenseman, had his name called. 115th overall by the Canucks in last June's draft. He's back in Belleville right now, but impressed with some smart play in the Penticton rookie tournament. So asked this morning, uh, PK was, if uh, he looked forward to the day that the three of them would play in the NHL together. He said it's possible, but it won't happen before it's time. Mark. PK had a physical second period, a big hit on Brad Richardson. There's a pass in front. It goes off the stick of... Gallagher he had three assists on Thursday night in the win over Edmonton after taking a bad penalty in the final two minutes against Calgary which really thwarted the Canadians hopes of coming back. Yeah he is spectacular in Edmonton. Speaking of comebacks the Canucks have come back for all three of their wins this year two in overtime. Their two losses by identical 4-1 scores to San Jose. Here's Henrik Sedin now with Daniel joining him in the zone. It's broken up by Josh Georges who backhands it back to center. Garrison gets it deep. He's had a career high nine shots on goal himself through 40 minutes. Daniel Briere at center. The Gatineau native getting a thrill in the twilight of his career to play with the Canadians. Pacioretty and Kessler tangling behind the net. Tanev patiently plays it up the boards. Santorelli stick handles his way and gets it out. Pass Briere at center. Kessler. Fires it in deep, waiting for his price. Two back around the glass ahead to Pacioretty off the stick of Eller and back down the ice. And this will be icing against the Canadians. Carey Price for years has been known as one of the best puck handling goaltenders along with Marty Brodeur and a few others. But I like this simple little move right behind the net. He knows Subban's going to come in there. He wants the puck. Just leave it for him and let the defenseman that has the... Uh, the normal stick and not the goalie stick trying to clear the zone. Coach has been happy with Price's start to the season, a 270 goals against average to start. Here's a chance in front for Pacioretty. Fanning, then goes the backhand. He's taken down, and a penalty coming here. Will it be a penalty shot? Pacioretty down, penalty shot coming. So a minute 30 into this third period. Montreal's been awarded a penalty shot. Pacioretty taken down on the hook by Bieksa. Will get a penalty shot against Luongo. And with one of Montreal's most dangerous scorers, Roberto Luongo is going to have to come up awfully big here. Pacioretty opened the scoring in the first period with his second of the season. In now on the penalty shot. Shoots and misses. That might have hit Luongo, Mark. May got his blocker on it as he was going high on the stick side. Yeah. Patch ready coming in from uh, Luongo's left and then just tries to come across with a little bit of speed right there. It's hard to tell from that angle. This will show it clearly. Yeah, he does. He gets it whether it's a blocker or a stick. No question about it. 
the chicken wing defense up. And it's a one goal game. Ryan Stanton racing for the puck along the boards to Booth. Played out by Richardson to Cassian, who's been quiet tonight. He stick handles out of the play, and it's sent back down the ice by the Canadians. And another icing call against Montreal. Well, when you let in such a strange goal in the second period, put yourself down one. This is how you make amends, and I did say that it was really nobody's fault, but that is how you get trust back in your teammates when you make a huge save. Otherwise, Montreal could have been up 3-1. How hard is that to, to make the turn from the last four minutes of the second when you get that own goal to facing down a penalty shot in a minute 30 into the first, third period? It's not easy. I can tell you that much, but you can sure see that there's that focus that Luongo has, and one of the reasons why he's been one of the best for years and years. Brandon Press tangling with Brad Richardson. Diaz there to help out. Richardson gets it towards the goal, sent back to the periphery by Georgia. Crust ahead to a charging Rene Bourg. Yannick Weber is there, sends it back down the ice. The Canadians diving for their bench, trying to escape with too many men on the ice call. Dernay ahead to Galchenyuk, the big Russian shifty, going wide on Hamhuis and lost control of it. Gets it back to Bouillon. Bouillon to the high spot. Gallagher shoots! Rebound! And it's knocked aside by Gallagher! McCannon tries to come out front. Gallagher turning behind Luongo. Brendan Gallagher. Off to the side of the net. It goes to the side bar. McCannon to the blue line. It pops over the stick to Jared Tenorti. Across to Francis Bouillon, the center. Firing it right back in the Canuck zone. Tandarelli shovels it back to Tanev. They come the other way. Dan Hamuse off the left wing to center. Chris Higgins. He shoots it high into the face of P.K. Subban, and he's down on his knees in the corner. But looks like he may be okay. P.K. looks as though he's a little shaken up here, but luckily he turns just at the last minute. Let's take a look at that almost too many men by the Montreal Canadiens. Weber throws it all the way near the Montreal bench, and then Gallagher gets his best chance of the period. Roberto makes two great saves. Let's take a look at the Gallagher family. What sort of reaction are they going to have? Two sisters you know? are there. His brother's in Calgary yeah. tonight playing in a high school tournament. So he couldn't be here for the big homecoming. Orneval is shot. Blocker saved as Luongo picked that up at the last minute. Weber banging with Mortaval along the boards. He gets it to White, rimming it all the way back to the blue line. Rafael Diaz sends it back behind the net. Mortaval to the corner. Backhands to Josh Georges across to Diaz. Diaz fires it. It's blocked by Stanton. Stanton tied up along the boards by Ryan White. White gets it to Moan. It goes over his stick right to Diaz, who sends it back into the corner. Mortaval in front. Bounce it back to the point. Steady by Georges. Gets it deep again. This fourth line for Montreal with great pressure against the number two line for Vancouver. Fourth line for Montreal has been good all night. Sure have, especially yep. in the faceoff circle, getting possession, yep. holding on to the puck. Georges pokes it to the boards. Ahead to Lars Eller. Eller got credited with that own goal in the second period, his fifth of the season. And he's ridden into the boards by Jason Garrison. Dalby ahead. The exit jump into rush with Weiss. Ahead to Weiss. Weiss can't get a hard shot away. It trickles to the side of the goal. Big check by Eller as he comes back up the ice. Eller across the line to Pacioretty. Pacioretty towards the net. Tipped by Eller. And Luongo got a piece of it. Garrison chipping it to center. Bodied by Eller. And the half send it right back. The Canucks had to scramble to get off the ice. They had seven or eight guys on the ice. Eller bouncing it back down the ice. And this will be icing against the Canadian. Montreal out shooting the Canucks 5-0 to start the third. Jason Garrison, this big hit on Eller. You know, Garrison's had a lot of good scoring opportunities, but throwing the body around. And then the Eller-Pacioretty combination right here, you know, 
Terrian was telling us today that he's been thinking about putting those two together for some time now, and he's finally had the opportunity, and he's really liked what he's seen so far. What a recovery, though, by Eller after that uh, hellacious hit he took by Eric Graba in the first round. He was bloodied and unconscious and concussed, and he's come back bigger, stronger, and more combative, a more competitive hockey player. And after more than 220 games, the NHL is beginning to grow into that big center, that strength up the middle that the Canadians are looking for. And talks about the sports psychologist Sylvain Gilmond that he yeah. works with. And that's been beneficial. Eller saying he trusts himself more. It's noticeable too. Well, Briere uh, bumping with Henrik Sedin, and Henrik thought he should have been tossed. Hendrick loses the draw to Briere. It goes to the boards. Subban gets it past Hamus, who interferes with Eller, and he's going to get a penalty. Interference coming to Hamus as he interfered with Lars Eller's progress on the chip in. As soon as Briere threw that past Hamus, he knew that Hamus was going to be in trouble because Eller had Thank you for a full head of steam right there, and Hamus was caught flat footed, and there's nothing he could have done on that other than just simply get out of the way. Eller may have dressed it up a bit, too. Oh, for sure. There's so Hamus wrong with that. in the box for interference. The Canadians one for one on the power play. That was Max Pacioretty's second goal of the season in the first period. So Darnay will center. Pacioretty and Rene Bork with Subban on the point. Markov right up on the right wing with Garrison. Richardson and Santarelli to start the PK with Bieksa and Garrison on the line. It's picked off by Dearnay. He gets it back to the line. Markov stops it, shows it right around again to the far corner. Pacioretty stopping it up. Checked by Santarelli, and he'll find a gap and fire it down the ice. Andre Markov in a contract year, 24 minutes and 24 and a half minutes on his road trip in Alberta. Big ice time for an aging defenseman on bad knees, but he's looked good in the early going. He's been excellent tonight, blocking shots, all sorts of ice time. Markov gets it to Bork, comes to the near corner. Pacioretty off the boards, back to Markov at the circle. Across to Pacioretty and his skates. Pacioretty now looks at Subban, feeds him at the point. Big shot! It's blocked by Kessler. That's his third block shot of the game. Pacioretty again drops it to the line. Subban down low. Markov gets a one-timer right on, and Luongo makes the save. Canadians tagging up, come back into the zone. Pacioretty bouncing it off the boards, can't get it past Kessler. Bieksa working on Bork behind the Vancouver goal. Rene Bork rims it back to the line. Subban fumbling with it, but manages to keep it in. In the corner now. It comes right back to Subban. Rink wide to Markov. Back to P.K. Subban. His shot off escape. Markov in front. The cannon scores! Thomas Placanitz on the power play. The second power play goal on a special teams night for Montreal. A broken play here by the Montreal Canadiens. Leads to the 3-1 lead right here. Just throw it to the net, hits bodies along the way, heads right onto the stick of Markov. Here's a deflection right there. And he finds Placanitz right there and that's why Luongo couldn't spot it here from the Lasix net cam again. Roberto, of course, after the first deflection, has to play Markov to his right and then not expecting the pass of the Canets. Good break for Montreal. Luongo didn't have a chance. Nope. Habs poke it back to center. The Canets from Markov and Subban at 6.46 on the power play. There's a shot from a far angle. Tanev across to Hamus, his shot in traffic in front, loose puck cleared by Josh Georges as Daniel Sedin labored to get to the puck. Hansen to Daniel Sedin, looking for the back pass, it was stopped by Georges, now Hamus again, 
His shot blocked by Gallagher. Gallagher, what an effort. Bounces it ahead to Galchenyuk. He's tripped from behind. Another penalty coming to Vancouver. Daniel Sedin heading to the penalty box and complaining all the way. But Montreal is going back on the power play as Daniel Sedin takes down Galchenyuk. It's 3-1 Montreal. Time now for Hockey Night Close-Up, brought to you by Subway Restaurant. Who else but Carey Price has been brilliant for the Montreal Canadiens today. Real economical in his moves, as Scott Oak has said. And I'm just really impressed the way in which he reads the play and his anticipation. And that's why Montreal's up 3-1 with 12.28 to go. Canadians on the power play, they're two for two tonight. With the man advantage, Daniel Sedin in the penalty box for hooking. Pacioretty finds Markov at the blue line. Markov's shot deflects right to Brad Richardson. Good play there by Santarelli to break it up, and he'll send it in deep behind the Montreal goal. Subban, Pester, goes down on the forecheck by Richardson. Now Markov leads it for Subban across to Dearnay, who's reunited with Pacioretty on the power play tonight. They're line mates early in the season before being broken up by Terrian. Markov, rink wide, and the pass back from... Rene Bork was in behind Pacioretty. Santarelli all by himself on the PK here. We'll get it in deep and head for a change. Subban starts the rush ahead to Markov. Back to PK Subban at center. Sends it around the boards. Garrison is there for Vancouver. Chopping it back to the near corner. Galchenyuk in a battle for it with Stanton. And the Canucks cleared. Hendrick Sedin chasing it down ahead of Markov. Markov trying to ride him into the boards. Hendrick protecting the puck. Still on it. Markov's got his arm around him. Now Kessler holding off three Canadians. Markov sends it to the open corner for P.K. Subban. At center, Plakanic finds Galchenyuk by himself. He leaves the puck high in the zone, picks it up. Back to Plakanic. It bounces off his stick. Stanton physical in the corner with Placanic and pops free as Gallagher comes in to help out. Bouillon plays it off the glass, manages to keep it in, and it's scooped up by Kessler. He's got Stanton on the right side and Higgins on the left. Ryan Stanton gets it in deep. Final 10 seconds here of the Montreal power play, which has been ineffective against this penalty kill unit, which has given up its first two special teams goals of the season tonight here in Vancouver. Keller banging away. Vancouver. No shots yet to show in this third period. Subban shot. Tip right on. Briere with a chance in close. Another shot. Pad save. Down goes Moan. Higgins gets it to the board. Not out. Georges towards the net. Blocked by Chris Tanev. And Higgins will get it off the glass. But it bounces and hits a Canuck player at the bench for a whistle. A very confident Montreal team, of course, with only 10 minutes to go, though. But just great puck movement right here. They almost go up 4-1 in this missed attempt from Bork to Pacioretty. And then Daniel Briere gets a stick on this one. And Bertel gets a big save right there because it's all Montreal right now. They know that they're leading and that Vancouver has done almost nothing in this third period. Well, outside of the Sedin line, there's just no offense nothing right from now. Vancouver. They've got to get Cassian and Booth and the rest going. Back comes Dernay inside the line, ahead, reaching forward is Press. He won't get there, and Luongo will smother the puck for a whistle. Midway through the third period, and the Canadians with a 3-1 lead. About halfway through this third period. Not an easy way to play for a goalie, though. Carey Price faced 31 after two, and then nothing with 10 minutes to go. Yannick Hansen chasing the puck, bumping with Rafael Diaz. It's poked along the board. Stan gets a shot towards the net, broken up by Georges. Here comes Rene Bork with some steam ahead. Backhand, just missing on the glove side. Throws it back towards the net as Dearnay went crashing into the Longo. The other way, Hendrik Sedin catches up with the puck. Hansen going to the net. It bounces in behind the Montreal goal. Off the glass, gloved by Garrison, can't keep it in. And it's whistled on the offside. Montreal speed is taking over the game, there's no question about that. Rennie Bork 
Great example of it right here. I mean, that's a powerful skating stride right there. Now he just shoots the backhand wide, but that's an awfully difficult play for a defenseman when you're chasing a guy as fast as Rennie Bork. We see that in flashes from Rennie Bork. You know, he's so difficult to handle when he plays like that. Well, he can be a very, very good player. He can be almost a dominant player when he's playing his best. It's a long shot from Bieksa that gets trapped by Price. His He'll first shot, which I first said, shot. you know, it's very difficult when now it's almost 11 minutes of inactivity after you've been so busy and your mind just easily stays in the game. And yeah. now you're, it's a grind now to try and refocus and concentrate on that next shot. Santarelli between Higgins and Cassian. As John Tortorella tries to get something going here offensively. First time since opening night that the Canucks have had four lines. After going with 11 forwards and seven defense. Following the injury to Alex Burroughs. We saw limping this morning around the locker room. And yeah. he said he thinks he's at least a couple of weeks away. Garrison behind the net to the near side. Santarelli hustling, gets the puck to Higgins. Higgins in front off the paddle of Carey Price, right to Pacioretty, and he'll flip it to center. The Canucks embark on a seven-game, 13-day road trip after this three-game homestand ends tonight. Heading first to Philadelphia on Tuesday. Cassian chipping it back in. Bouillon is there, turning away from the four check of Higgins. Loses the puck, Santarelli to Cassian. Back to the point. Shot right on by Garrison. Here's Santarelli! What a chance! And out to cut the angle is Carey Price. Daniel Briere with Pacioretty going to the net. It goes off the skate of Bieksa and back the other way. Mike Santarelli still got some gas. Up ice to the right side. Long shot by Cassian. His glove by Price. As they have words after the fact, it's Subban and Cassian exchanging hairy eyeballs. One of After Hours' guests tonight, Mike Santarelli, gets another good scoring chance. He's been really active tonight. He's actually had a really good game for the Vancouver Canucks. As you said, Mark, he is brought here as a depth player. And you know what? There, people thought he was going to find some action in Utica, and yeah. that just hasn't been the case. He's, as Tortorella told me today, his attitude is, I'm not going away. Hamuse throws it on goal. Another save by Price. As the Canucks finally get some shots, here's a loose puck at the side of the goal. Weiss can't get the stick on it, and Gallagher hauls it to center. Brendan Gallagher chipping it, chasing it now. Hamuse rubbing it along the boards. Gallagher still fighting. He's got it on his stick. Back to Markov, across to Subban. Subban, no shot. Down low, Placanitz fires it, and it glances off the stick of Galchenyuk and out of play, but what hustle by Brendan Gallagher. He's been getting better and better in this game. I thought the first period, he and some of his teammates weren't quite as good as they were in Calgary and Edmonton, but this, this game, second and third period, they've been just terrific. And he not only going to the front of net, but showing good playmaking ability too. Three times a 40 goal scorer with the Vancouver Giants. Ninth round pick into junior, fifth round into the NHL. You heard Ron say he wasn't even invited to the combine. That's hard to believe, isn't it? It is. And he's the all-time leading scorer in Giants history. As that one goes right back at Luongo with 7.41 to go. Ryan White, who was a healthy scratch against Edmonton, has had a renewed effort here tonight. Taking advantage of this uh, Hanson turnover, that's just not... Good hockey right there by Vancouver. It seems like the game's starting to really disappear now. Sedin's out against the Montreal fourth line as Terrian shows confidence in his fourth liners. Georges towards the net. He scores! Screenshot that beats Luongo high. The fourth line for Montreal hasn't hurt them at all tonight, and now they actually add to the Montreal lead to make it 4-1 on this play. They've been a very safe combination, the three of them. Moen gets it back to the point, and here's that uh, little wrister from Georges. You can just see lots of traffic in front of Luongo. He still has to try and find that puck, though. I know there's a lot of bodies in front of him and a lot of big bodies, but. 
take a look at Grandma Eleanor Georges. If that doesn't make you smile, nothing will. There she is. How great is that? A little part of the Western flavor the Habs have brought here to Vancouver with five of their players having played junior hockey in the Western Hockey League. Josh Georges, the Kelowna Rocket. And a rocket, a soft rocket there, high to beat Luongo. Here's Higgins the other way. Shot, pad, save by Carey Price. In behind the net. Bouillon checking Higgins, Dernay around the dasher boards and back down the ice. I still have a smile on my face seeing Evelyn Horst cheer for her grandson. Georges with his first point of the season. His first goal from Diaz and Moan as the fourth liners beat the Canucks first line on that play. Down goes Eller. Puck rolls towards Luongo and he'll cover up and a derisive cheer goes up here at Rogers Arena. Uh, a lot of those are from Montreal Canadian fans though. Keep in mind there are a lot of red jerseys here. <laughs> well Jake meets a girl with an eye for trouble and his car on an all new Republic of Doyle. That's Wednesday at 9 on CBC television. Briere gets the drop, but the Canucks and Hughes gets possession. Ahead to Booth, leaving it now for Kessler to Tanev. Tanev fires it around the board, takes a weird hop right to Booth in the corner. David Booth fires it towards the net, blocked by Pacioretty. Booth checks him. Subban tries to go the other way. He's checked behind the net by Dale Weiss. Weiss battling with Subban, who goes down. It's right in front to Booth, and he's checked by Carey Price. Pacioretty flipping it to center. Daniel Briere all alone. As the Canadians change, he's checked by Weiss. It comes back to Tannen. Hamus bouncing it to center. Dale Weiss has it hop over his stick. Diaz ahead. Placanitz trying to catch Montreal or Vancouver in a change, and his shot whistles wide. Weiss at the end of his shift. We'll flip it down ice and head for a change. Dolphy on a board check as Tortorella is looking for somebody to show some life. Galchenyuk's pass was off a of skate right to Dolphy in the zone. He hits the skates of Richardson who goes down and back on the Canadians. Dayarne all by himself gets a shot. Pass saved by Luongo. Rebound all the way up high in the zone. Dolphy clears it to center. Back comes Montreal. They are a into the high slot. It goes behind Prust who left it for Rene Bourque. He throws it off the arm of Garrison. It comes back to Bouillon. In the corner now. Bork turns away from Dolphin. Rene Bourque tries to center. Paddle down by Luongo to keep that at bay. Prust into the corner. They are back to Francis Bouillon. Across to Markov. Markov in front and through traffic. Luongo. Makes the glove save. Habs GM Mark Bergevin taking in the action here on this Western Road swing in a 4-1 Habs league. Please enjoying their homecoming tour here tonight. Their team up by three. And their families, of course, enjoying this 4-1 uh, lead with 4.45 to go. There's the Gallagher family enjoying third period action. Then, of course, Josh Georges makes it 4-1. And, of course, my favorite part of the game, Here's Grandma Eleanor Georges right here, <laughs> enjoying the action. And once again, big smile on my face. That they is are just they. cute. Camped in behind Luongo. Sends it back to Subban. P.K. Subban can't get the shot through. Daniel at his own line to center. Daniel Sedin's pass broken up by Subban. The other way for Rene Borg. Stanton getting back. Borg can't get a shot of the bouncing puck. He's tied up by Stanton. Now he tries to drag it in front. And Stanton holds him off again. Yannick Hansen takes the headman pass to center now. Leaves it for Daniel Sedin. Long shot blocker saved by Carey Price. It comes to Henrik in the corner. Back behind the goal to Daniel. Henrik. Markov on him. Gets it free to Travis Moan. His pass to the right wing. Ryan White chopping away at it. And that familiar refrain from... Montreal begins to erupt here in Vancouver with just under four minutes to play here in the third period. Bone heavy on the forecheck. Tanev protects the puck, gets it to Santarelli, then on to David Booth. 
Booth looking for wingers. Now Cassian joins the rush. Santarelli can't make a play with it, and it comes back outside the line to Tannen. Hamus winds and fires again. The Canucks challenge for offense here again tonight. White flipping it into the zone. Eller onside, pushed into the boards by Hamus. Back to pick up the puck is Pacioretty to Diaz at the point. To the far side, long shot there. Into the glass and out of play from Daniel Briere. John Tortorello be learning a lot about his players here in this third period. You, you know, you move to a new organization, you got to find out what your players are, but you don't always find out who they are, what kind of player they are when you're winning. It's in these third periods of a dud of a game or a dud of a third anyways, when you find out who's going to play the entire game. And I'm sure he's taking note of some of the performances. They only have seven shots, and most of them just in the last few minutes, and not many of them very difficult for Carey Price. Hasn't been good enough, no question about that. And Tortorella said today it's a work in process. Remember, it took Adam Oates half a season in Washington to get that team on track. There's Pacioretty trying to go backhand between his legs in front and couldn't beat Luongo. It's shoveled back in by Markov. Luongo gets it to the corner. The exit turns it over. In front is Briere trying to find the handle. And he's checked by the exit. It's flipped back to the line. Galchenia keeps it in. Eller has to come back to center as he regroups with Georgians. P.K. Subban sends it right back in. Montreal protecting this lead now. Still on the forecheck. Dolphe loses control of it. Placanitz to Gallagher, Gallagher in, shoots and it goes off the stick at Garrison and glancing out of play. One of the big storylines here in Vancouver, Kelly, has been uh, the line juggling yep. and John Tortorella trying to find offense uh, beyond the Sedin first line. He's tried many wingers with, with them, but once you get by the first line here in Vancouver, there's been no offense. It hasn't been easy for these guys, and even you look at a guy that we know Ryan Kessler's going to have a great year, but he hasn't had the best of luck. He is on the ice for the second Canadian's goal, which made him a minus five on this season. It's minus luck. six. Yeah. And and you know what? That is just plain old bad luck. But, you, you know, know, he had three shots on goal starting to start the third. Three hits, two block shots. He got a third yeah. in the third period. With 75% of the faceoff circle. And then stepped... Have to be on the ice with that old goal. Exactly. To go minus five now in the yeah. season. Bouillon towards the net. High into the glass. Crust ridden into the boards by Weber. Bork fighting for it. Gets it to the boards. Down goes Darnay with a check by Sestito. A big mismatch in size there. Now Crust tied up by Weber. Rene Bork gets it free to Darnay. And the Canadians are keeping the puck away from Vancouver. Bouillon across to Tenorti. Tenorti a long shot. And Luongo makes the save with 1.18 to go. Here's that road trip, Mark, that you're talking about. Extended seven-game, 13-night road trip starting uh, Tuesday in Philadelphia. And there are not a lot of easy teams to play against on that trip. So this is going to be a, certainly not going to say make or break part of their schedule, but an important part to stay in the race this early on. Canucks wind up a three-game homestand here tonight. Diaz in deep again. Travis Moen leaves it for White. White back along the board. Bordeval has it broken up and flipped out to center. In the final minute here of the third period, and a cheer goes up for those who stayed around in the half-empty Rogers Arena. Booth checks Bordeval. Tandarelli tries to find it. Booth along the boards to Cassian. His first game back after serving an eight-game suspension for high-sticking Sam Gagne in the mouth and breaking his jaw during the preseason. Cassian, stick handling along the boards, gets it to Hamuse. Hamuse back to Cassian. To Hamuse, his shot to the side of the net is blocked. Cassian turns and fires a weak shot. Tandarelli at the side of the goal. Stopped by Carey Price. Bordeval flips it back to center. The dying seconds ticking away here as the Canadians fans who stayed to enjoy this.
cheer their team on. In the corner, Booth to center, and that'll do it. The horn sounds to end this hockey game as Carey Price from Anaheim Lake, BC, and the Montreal Canadiens defeat the Vancouver Canucks 4-1 to one to hand Vancouver its third loss of the season, the third win of the young season for Montreal. Montreal Canadiens with their second consecutive road victory. So the Habs send Vancouver to defeat.